Today's video, pain, trauma, alcohol abuse. Think about that. Okay, how are, are you in pain? All right, maybe you're drinking alcohol and taking some Vicodins and things like that. It feels good. I know I've done it. Trauma, maybe some childhood trauma. You got some of that going in there. Guess what? You know, we either smoke or uh, pop pills or alcohol to kind of cover that up. Alcohol abuse. Guess what? You know, you feel up, you wake up feeling like crap, hangover. It's you're drinking a poison and uh, then you develop some, you know, some esophageal problems and some gut problems because of alcohol. So uh, if you know anyone or maybe yourself have a problem with any of these things, stay tuned. OK, you might learn something because uh, you need to get a hold of yourself. All right. We all do. All right. And it doesn't seem like the world is going to get any better for any of us. So you and I are in the same boat, right? All right. So I quit drinking alcohol a few months before my father died, uh, died of alcoholic liver disease seven and a half years ago. In a few years, in a few, excuse me, in a few years before his death, I had watched him become more disabled from physical and emotional pain. Can you relate? All right. I preach, um, you know, shadow work here on this channel and uh, also to deal with your past. You know, maybe there was some abuse and uh maybe there was some neglect and that causes you pain and you may not want to uh deal with it because guess what maybe you're drinking alcohol to mask the pain because once you drink alcohol you go numb right that's why we do it i also suffered in similar ways as my father i sure did my dad had a drinking problem i had a drinking problem my brother had a drinking problem so I feel you and I understand and I personally went through this shit, right? It's no secret that many emotional and physical ailments get passed down to new generations. What was I just talking about? Like my dad, like I just said, I had severe depression, excuse me. I had severe depression, constant headaches, Nerve pain, bloating, little stomach problems, right? Digestive problems, esophageal problems, right? Tremors and foggy brain. Do you have any of these symptoms? And if so, dude, go see a doctor. Slow down on your drinking. Not for me, not for, not for anyone, but for yourself, for your life. Dude, you gotta, you're the only one that can treat you better. Only you can, right? Not some woman or anything else. It's you. Yes, alcohol makes you sick. It's a poison. 85 or 86 percent of the U.S. population has uh, consumed alcohol in the past year. 86 percent, bro. You're not alone. OK, you're not the only one with problems. You're not the only one masking your symptoms through alcohol. The people that you're going to go have a good time with tonight because it's Friday night. Those people that you're going out there drinking and doing all sorts of fun things are suffering just like you. They're your friends. They're your neighbors. They're suffering just like you. Also. 25% of U.S. people over 18 engage in binge drinking, which is very heavy drinking. Kids. So think of how bad these kids already at 18, think of how much trauma they already have. Binge drinking. Guess what happened? 
parents aren't around, someone got frisky, those things, serious problems, all right? We all have to take accountability for how society is, men, all right? Men, because we're allowing this shit to happen, all right? Most of us don't even stand up for themselves. It's up to us. Society is the way it is because women are let loose. And that's why our society is the way it is, because of women, all right? Most of us are alone, all right? Because of problems. It's up to us to be men. We do, why do we drink so much? You might have that question, right? Right? Uh, if we knew that alcohol makes it sick, excuse me, let me start that again. Why do we drink so much if we know that alcohol makes us sick? Well, that's because initially, alcohol also makes you feel numb. Like I mentioned earlier. And we want to feel numb instead of the feeling of the pain we have on the day-to-day -day basis, right? Day-to-day. -day. You're not the only one out there with pain, all right? The truth is that alcoholism, like many addictions, is about pain. Many of us are in terrible pain either physically or emotionally. And alcohol helps pain even if it's only briefly. And guess what? That's worth its weight in gold, right? Often physical pain, physical pain from injuries or chronic illness will send us searching for numbing agents like alcohol. Mental illness, unresolved childhood trauma, because that's what I talk about on this channel, childhood trauma, that's why it's so important for you to go back to your past and deal with it. And, excuse me, childhood trauma and life stressors often create intense emotional pain that can be unbearable. And in fact, emotional pain is often worse than physical pain. We know that. And is often stigmatized and hard to treat. Worse yet, emotional pain often leads to physical health issues that causes pain as well. It's like a big, dead, full cycle that goes around and around and around. It's important we understand this fact about alcohol and other addictions because without this crucial understanding we may never truly be free from drinking okay be able to help people with their own addictions let me read that to you the reason i'm making these videos it's not because i'm fooling myself or anything like that is because i know how hard it is to quit drinking i know how hard it's to get away from the biggest drug ever pussy I know all about it as the biggest drug on earth is pussy so I know about it fellas okay I'm here trying to help one of you guys and you know if you look at me and you hate me then I'm sorry bro uh, I just want to help you guys women don't want to help you all right it's men who change the world and that's why I make this channel so I can reach you guys because we're not in good shape I'm going to reread this to you again, okay? It's important we understand this fact about alcohol and other addictions because without this crucial understanding, we may never truly be able to help people with their addictions. Alcohol use is often driven by pain and according to research, may have a cyclical, cyclical relationship around and around. This means the pain drives people to drink, but drinking also brings more pain, which makes people drink more. See what I'm saying? All right, it's so important for you to slow down on your drinking and, it's, and you can't do it by saying, I'm only gonna drink this much or I'm gonna do this because it's never that much. Trust me, I, mean, I made those excuses myself plenty of fucking times. 
All right, people who abuse alcohol also could benefit from understanding this important relationship. Often, those of us who drink heavily may not understand the nature of our relationship with alcohol. I know I didn't. I drank because it was a habit that gave me a sense of comfort. Because we all want comfort, man. But it wasn't until I quit drinking that I realized how pain really influenced my alcohol use. It's no wonder then that with the pandemic, alcohol use went up. You know it went up. I was drinking. Hell yeah, 2020. That was, that was the last year I drank was 2020. <sighs> I was drinking heavily, like most of you, and I'll prove it. Uh, one study shows that heavy alcohol use went up 60%. I know you were drinking during the pandemic. With most people citing stress as the number one reason they were drinking more. And guess what's going on uh, here pretty soon? The holidays. And guess what people are going to be doing this holiday uh, season? Drinking to find comfort. See how that works? I don't want to go see so-and-so sober because I can't handle that person sober. So we're going to numb ourselves. You know what I'm talking about. Stress is a source of emotional and physical pain. And as such, no wonder people are turning to alcohol. More during the pandemic. St stress also brings up a person's unresolved trauma. Stress also brings up a person's unresolved trauma as it is often ripe for triggering old wounds. You've heard this word here plenty of times before if you followed me this year. Thank you for being here. Hey, you may be a, a friend of me, bro, but you know, bro, I, as long as you get something out of this, you know, good for you. It's not a stretch to say that old traumas are really the route of all emotional pain. This is the guy I, I, I read about and I listen to and I watch a lot of videos. Uh, I think I have one of his books that I need to start reading. But anyways, it's Dr. Gabor Mate. Would argue that trauma may even be the route of some physical pain and chronic illness as well. In an internal family systems, Models of trauma therapy, addictions is actually called a firefighter, which is essentially a part of ourselves developed in trauma to stop our psyche from feeling acute pain. Firefighters describes the parts of our person's inner system that are characterized by behavior that is reactive, impulsive, risk-taking, or disassociative, and generally focused on living in the moment. Firefighter parts encourage behavior designed to put out emotional fires. Often these firefighters consist of reactive behaviors aimed to strap out feelings. The pain from our early wounds, childhood trauma, substance abuse is one such behavior and is and as such is an extremely effective firefighter. My father was in chronic pain most of his life. He had diabetic nerve damage and comp compressed discs in his back. So you know this guy was in some terrible pain when it comes to the back. You know, there's no, there's nothing you can do about the back. He also suffered from crippling depression since his teen years. So this man has been suffering 
all of his life. And guess what? He never dealt with his trauma. You don't want to be like this man. You do not want to be in your 60s and 70s trying to deal with your trauma, fellas. You don't want to, all right? That's not what you should be doing, all right? But it was clear that the prime reason he drank was to stop the demons in his head. You know those demons. Drinks more. It won't be a problem. You don't have a problem. Look at that girl over there. Think of the things you want to do. And guess what? Then it happens. Right? And there you are. Another day. Fuck. I did this again. <laughs> These demons were all remnants of his abusive childhood. On top of it all, alcohol also softens the electrical pain from his neuropathy. So alcohol became a solve that stopped the pain of his early childhood trauma wounds, as well as physical pain from conditions he acquired in adulthood. Little did he know though that drinking was actually making these conditions much, much worse. Think about your drinking. You know, um, it's out of hand. Uh, I know uh, mine was, and most likely yours is too, because we're Americans. More, right? Let's continue with the point is emotional and physical pain is an important reason why people drink or engage in any addi addiction, excuse me, in any addiction for that matter. And all too often, the emotional and physical pain are linked. The more we look at this important factor, the mysteries behind alcohol abuse and other addictions. I think I had messed up there, but let's continue. <laughs> so what can we do with this knowledge? First, we need to stop demonizing people with addictions. If that's so true, there's nothing wrong with you, bro. All right, if you're self-medicating, if you're smoking, if you're doing whatever you're doing, I ain't here to judge you. I'm just saying you gotta find relief, however, because these assholes out here aren't giving you any help. So you gotta go on your own, and I understand you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm with you, okay? Sometimes we get a little nuts sometimes. So uh, I can relate to you, brother, okay? I was there. So what can we do about, what can we do with this knowledge? First, we need to stop demonizing people with addictions. There are human beings in pain and have found something to help them quell it, right? Right? It, you're finding relief. It's fine. As long as you find relief, hey, it's all good, man. Most people are in chronic, unrelenting pain. We'll find something to help them cope with it right some countries have actually developed a legal euthanasia model specifically to help people end their lives due to conditions that cause an overwhelmingly painful death it's actually not a terminal na nature of these conditions but the pain of them that warrant the creation of made medical assisted in death law in countries like Canada. Well, there you go. Maybe, you know, that sounds like a slippery slope, right? Maybe you think your life's not worth it and then you wanna go here. That's terrible. And, and think about why people would wanna go there. Why isn't life or your life amazing? Why aren't you happy with your life? Find why you're not happy in your life and change those conditions for yourself, okay? The only thing that you can control is what you can do and think. That's the only thing you can control. You can't control people, you can't control the weather and anything else. You can control yourself and sometimes that's all you really need. According to the internal family system model, we often create parts of our personality that legitimately seeks 
and stomps out emotional pain so we can cope. And without these emotional firefighters, overwhelming pain can lead to someone towards emotional collapse. So it's time we look deeper into what's happening to people with addictions. The more the general public understands this, the more we can work from compassion. You need to have compassion with yourself, all right? Instead of criticizing yourself because you're not doing yourself any favors, all right? All right. Secondly, it's worth advocating for more research and treatment strategies that address the underlying pain conditions as the way that it also treats addictions. In other words, if we start at the root, like your childhood trauma or neglect or sexual abuse, in my case, you know, it happens. And, you know, we need to really understand that we need to get back to who we are from when we were young. And we need to take care of those problems so we can move forward. All right. The emotional pain from mental illness and unresolved trauma is excruciating and relentless. You know it's true, dude. It's time we recognize this and put more support in place. Lastly, all right, at the end of this video, please do something about your drinking, bro. Okay, start thinking about you because you are the most important thing in your life, bro. Lastly, the more we talk about this in general public, the more that people with addictions can gather the information they need to make better decisions. That's why I make this channel so we can talk about this shit because men don't have anywhere to go to talk about real stuff, all right? Not just what's allowed on YouTube. Had I understood that my addiction was related to untreated pain, it would have made a difference to me. I may have even quit sooner and found better recovery strategies, all right? And I hope that this resonates with someone that actually gets, that this video gets you to look at yourself. Many relapses happen because the first few months without the addictive substance feels like you're in, you have an, you have an exposed a nerve. You feel physically and emotional raw, which is in itself painful. It's so tempting to go back to addiction because you're feeling all the pain at once. Perhaps the more we understand the relationship of pain, the more we can create so sobriety strategies that people will actually use, you know? And that is the end of the video. And please understand that I'm here making videos for you to help yourself to make you aware that you might have a problem i'm not here to say you're right or wrong or i'm better i'm just saying that i hope that someone comes across this video and you change your mind that's all i'm here to do i'm just the messenger people and i will see you in a later video